Hello everybody, Nefertiti here, and it is time once again for another fantastic tutorial. And you might notice that my voice sounds extra crispy, clean, and clear. I've started using the AT2020, and thus far I am super duper happy with it. It captures sound the way I want it to, and it is awesome for recording new voiceovers for my videos. And speaking of my videos, I went over to the YouTube Community Hub and asked all of you, what kind of video would you like to see next? You all spoke up loud and clear, and the answer came through as body suits. Now, with this video, I do want to start by saying that it's not entirely full. And what I mean by that is that I'm going to be showing the process of how to make the actual body suit, but not the digigrade padding. This video already came out to be a little over 45 minutes long, and that's a long time to go through a video. So if I would have tried to tack on how to do the digigrade padding on top of that, it would have ended up being close to two hours, and I don't want to make you guys have to force and sit through two hours long because it does take a very long time to do both processes. So I'll come back and I'll tackle the actual padding in the future just to be able to help things out. I'll show you a couple work in progress photos from another suit I was working on to kind of get a general idea of how I make my shapes. But when the padding tutorial comes out, it will explain things a lot better. That said, in order to actually get started making the bodysuit, you are going to need all of your padding done and ready to go. You're going to most definitely need your feet as well, especially if you're doing a digigrade body. And you are going to need a duct tape dummy. I cannot stress enough how important the duct tape dummy is when doing a digigrade bodysuit. There are so many little curves and bends and things that in order to get the fit absolutely perfect the way it needs to be, you will definitely need a duct tape dummy. If you don't have one or you don't know how to make one, I can definitely recommend Sky Pro and Sky High Studios tutorials respectively. Both of them have really good information in them that will help you make a duct tape dummy safely, but definitely make sure that you have some friends around to help you out with it because it is a heck of a tiring process to try and do yourself and it's just safer to have, you know, spotters to watch out for you. Definitely check out their videos, they will be linked down in the description for more information. Once you have your duct tape dummy and all your padding done, ready to go, and your feet are pinned on the bodysuit, we can start learning how to pattern everything. So let's go ahead and dive into this tutorial. Alright, so to get started, you have your duct tape dummy on some sort of a rack to help float it. This just makes it much easier. You can work with it on the floor, but I find it easier to hang it up like this. The padding is all tacked and pinned in place. And of course, I have the sculpted foot that's just kind of sitting where it needs to sit. Thankfully, the client that I'm making this bodysuit for had a very similar body type to me, so I could just recycle my dummy. In order to save the dummy for future use, as well as keep the duct tape from sticking to itself, wrap the entire thing in a protective layer of cling film. This makes a heck of a difference in the end, trust me. Then I start separating the body in half. Because this character is symmetrical, I don't have to do two whole halves of this bodysuit. I can just do one. Super duper easy, and saves me a ton of time. Now, one little thing I want to mention here is regarding the pose of the dummy. Here it is in more of an A pose rather than a T pose, as this will help prevent the bagginess and sagginess from the suit later on in the future. I've tested it both ways, and I find it just ends up looking better like this if you make sure that it's in an A pose. Once you've taped up the majority of the torso, you can start moving down to the actual padding. Now, something I want to really stress here is when you're doing the padding, try not to make the tape super duper tightly wrapped around it. You want it to just sit loosely on top of everything and sort of mimic these shapes. Same with the kneecap here. Don't wrap it extremely tight around the knee. Just kind of let things slide and flow and get a little bit of room to breathe. Especially on a joint like this, you want the maximum amount of mobility that you can get. So don't make things too tight. You'll notice here that I go over this area a couple times, trying to build up a nice smooth plateau between the actual kneecap of the suit and the little shin that connects to the foot. This just helps smooth everything out and make it look much more natural, especially if you're going for a very slim digigrade body, as I'm doing here. If you're going for more of a chunky styled leg with big old thick thighs, there will probably be a tutorial for that in the near future. That I can promise you. Thank you. 
Once everything is all taped up, you can get a good look at it. This is a really good time to look at any areas on the silhouette that need a little bit of bulking out. If the bum looks a little bit flat, you can always add a little bit of extra padding to it. Same with the ankles, kneecaps, whatever. You can always shift and move around padding at this stage and then just retape over that area to make sure that the pattern sits the way it's supposed to sit and everything lines up properly. Now, when it comes to attaching a tail, I always make sure that the tail lines up with the body. Making sure that it sits in place, I then take my belt and wrap it around the hips of the dummy. It is very important that you line up the belt with the hips because your hip bone is going to support the majority of the weight. I notice that a lot of newer makers tend to do this around like their torso, like around their tummy, and it just doesn't make much sense to put it there because it's not going to be super stable and it doesn't line up with the base of your spine the way it should. The same thing with the wings here. I always mount my wings a little bit lower so that they sit right about the center of the shoulder blades. Because in reality, the wings wouldn't sit on the exact same bone that the shoulder blade does. It just, it would interfere with the movement and it doesn't make much sense. Personal taste, I guess, but anatomy looks cool in the end. <laughs> I'm marking the slit for the wings, making sure that it's just the wing arm so that the rest can slide through. And I've also taken the time to mark out where the belt is going to be so that I can super reinforce that area when I'm sewing it all together later on. With that done, I can now divide the bodysuit in half. Thankfully, because this character is symmetrical, I only need to pattern half this body and I can just flip the pattern to duplicate it. I also mark down where the neckline is going to be and I section off the armpit. Those little lines that you see me drawing through there are darts so that I can line everything up and make sure that it sits where it's supposed to sit. Next, I'm coming in and I'm marking down where these belly plates are going to be. This is a detail that I've never done on a suit before and it was really interesting to figure out how it was going to work, so stay tuned later in the video to check that out because I think it's pretty cool how I solved that problem. Next, I'm starting to draw on all of the markings. I have my phone in front of me to reference the character that I designed so that I can make sure everything lines up. This whole bodysuit originally came down from the May pre-made, which was nicknamed Fresh Embers. This character was super cool, and after the auction sold, the person who purchased it decided to upgrade it to a full suit and had me design the rest of the character, which was super duper cool because they gave me artistic liberty and... Eee, artistic liberty designs are so fun. I love working on them. I get to come up with whatever kind of design I want that best suits the character and see my dream just blossom so that somebody can wear them and have lots of happy memories. Marking areas like this are why it's absolutely crucial to make sure that you have a duct tape dummy to do these kind of patterns on because that curvature of the hip right there, if I was just guessing for my patterns on the digigrade body, I don't think I could have got it quite as accurate as I needed and it probably would have looked a little bit too flat. I'm weirdly specifically picky when it comes to the way markings lay on my suits, and I also try to incorporate things really smartly so that you can't quite see the transitions between certain seam lines. Something else I want to mention here is that the wrist was not long enough. The very end of the wrist should always line up with the bottom of your hip bone. And as you can see here by looking at it on my dummy, it definitely does not. I ended up extending this later on, so I felt like it was worth mentioning. The other thing I'm doing that you can see right here in this bright red sharpie is I am marking the direction of all the materials and furs. It is super important to make sure that all the fur flows away from the head and in the same direction, towards the extremities, towards your fingers, your toes, stuff like that. Try to avoid fur that goes directly up or faces away from itself because it ends up looking super scruffy and unprofessional. Something else I want to mention is this character has a big fluffy mane that goes down his back and in order to achieve that I'm going to be using a little bit longer fur and rather than have all the fur point down I'm having this fur point towards it. So when I sandwich the two halves together it forces the fur fibers into themselves and makes it stand up like a mohawk. Another day of working on this suit has passed and here I am cutting it all off the dummy. You want to be careful so that you don't actually cut the dummy itself in this process but carefully snip along with some good scissors that are dedicated to cutting duct tape because trust me, they will dull very quickly. Don't use your fabric scissors to cut duct tape or paper. I usually start by freeing the arm and then I'll cut up the shoulder blade and then I'll try most of the time to cut along the inner thigh 
all the way up the leg. That way you don't really notice the seams. Once all the pieces have been freed from the duct tape dummy, you can then start cleaning up the edges to make everything lay nice and flat. This part is vital for working on a fursuit. Now when I clean up patterns, I usually start with the arm by just trimming off any excess, and then I'll cut a big line from the underside of the armpit all the way down to the wrist. This little piece here is a bit of an overlap where I changed a marking. So I don't really need that piece, I can just cut it off. At this point, you need to start separating all the markings. If you have lots of little complicated ones, be sure to number which ones connect where so that you don't get lost. Thankfully, these ones alternated in color, so it made it really easy to be able to line them up. And because of that marking on the shoulder, I didn't need to cut a dart so that everything laid flat. Your patterns have to lay flat in order to transfer them onto fabric. That was one of the things that I struggled the hardest with to learn when I started doing patterning. And at some point in the future, I would really like to make a tutorial video that specifically talks about patterns and how you get around certain things that might be a little problematic. Now, I've seen a lot of fursuit makers that whenever they cut things, they seem to have designated spots where they put seams. I prefer to cut my seams as I go because if the markings add enough of a relief that I don't have to make another piece, that's fantastic. As few seams as possible will mean a stronger suit, and it will just generally look better because you won't see all the cross seams. For example, here on this big long part, I only had to put, I think, two separate pieces in it rather than having to do like six or seven that I've seen a lot of people do if they're trying to do a curve like that. It just, it helps everything lay flat. And in my honest opinion, it makes it look better because you don't have as many visible seams. There's a bit of quirkiness to having visible seams because it sort of reminds you that this is a handmade product, but at the same time, it breaks that character illusion. And I'm someone who is very dedicated to the magic while in suit. So I try to blur the line between costume and performer as much as possible. Thankfully at this portion right here at the kneecap, in order to cut that little marking out, it made a perfect seam. So I didn't have to add any darts to that part. So yay for less darts. Then we begin the ever tiring and exhausting process of transferring every single piece onto the fabric. All of these little stripes, lots of design pieces, lots of design elements, and every single piece had to be flipped and duplicated. You gotta have a left and a right side. And because I'm also cutting the pieces to the feet for this one, every single foot had to be duplicated as well. It makes a lot of pieces and a lot of parts. The more markings your character has, the more complex their design will be, the more expensive the fursuit. Now, whenever I'm marking my duct tape pieces here, the piece that I actually drew the markings on top of, I usually refer to as the dominant side of the pattern, and I mark it with a big black dot. The one that I flip over and then mark, I leave it completely blank. I've mixed up my parts so many times, and it's not fun when you get two of the same piece and then have to go back and fix it, which did happen a couple times in this project. So even as a professional who's done it a while, you can still screw up. Once the majority of all these pieces are traced onto the fabric, I can go ahead and start cutting them out.
after a very studious amount of cutting and snipping and cleaning, I have all of my pieces here and ready to go. This took hours to cut out. Another thing I really want to mention is that you should always make sure you keep every one of your duct tape pieces to your bodysuit until everything is finished. Do not throw them away until you are completely done. After that, I'm going to start pinning as many of these pieces as I possibly can that I know I can run through my sewing machine because anytime you can seize the opportunity to use your sewing machine on something rather than trying to sew it by hand, take that opportunity every time. Sew it on the machine, have that stability and that speed and avoid hand sewing because it just takes absolutely forever. Some of the best areas that you can pin are long straight curves, but for some of them, like this little piece here, I don't trust my machine not to eat it, so I'm going to hand sew these small pieces. To do this, I'm just simply doing the blanket stitch. I use roughly 1 4th of an inch for hand seam allowance, and just slowly lock the thread, and then begin sewing one by one. Now, if you're unsure how to do the blanket stitch, I do strongly recommend looking up a tutorial video that shows it in depth. But what you're basically doing is plunging the needle through the fabric, pulling it almost all the way tight, and then passing your needle and thread back through that loop before you pull it. This makes this sort of little snug top piece, and the more you repeat it, the more proficient you'll get. Try and keep your stitches packed as closely together as you possibly can for the best result. I also pull up my seams to make sure nothing comes undone before moving on to the sewing machine itself. Now, when doing the sewing machine, the important thing to keep in mind is that you only want to really focus on long, straight curves. Try to avoid doing anything rounded because it's going to be very difficult, especially if you're not super proficient with your sewing. Now, after I sew each one of these pieces here, because of the seam allowance, you're going to notice that there's a really big, thick, chunky edge. Because this sits on the wearer's arm, and I know it'll get irritating over time, I'm going to trim down any and all excess fabric here making sure that I'm still leaving enough that it doesn't get too close to the stitches. Cutting at an angle also helps to flatten out this material a little bit and make it not quite as irritating on the wearer's arms. Here you can see what it looks like all trimmed and flat versus the parts that I haven't done yet. Make sure to repeat this with every part that's going to rub directly on the skin. For smaller pieces like this one here, I'm hand sewing using the blanket stitch. And a little thing that I do want to mention is when you're actually sewing a part like this, when you have a tiny little marking, I personally apply seam allowance to the inside part of my marking. So that red one, that has seam allowance. The black part, however, does not on the inside edge. This ensures that the fit lines up absolutely perfectly and that there's no weird scrunching or bunching in the fabric. This does get a little bit difficult and tricky to understand, but the more you practice it, the more it'll just become second nature, and I almost guarantee it will make your markings look so much cleaner and defined. Pulling tight on those edges right on the very corner, I insert the needle, loop the fabric thread around, and then pull it really tight in the direction the corner is flowing before tying off the knot. Give it a stretch to make sure that nothing pulls apart. And then when you turn it over, you can see that the marking is all lined up nicely. Everything lays nice and flat. It's super strong. And look how pretty that is. Isn't that so nice? It hasn't even been shaved up yet and it still looks good. The next part I'm moving on to here is pinning any of the long straight curves onto the body. These arms here just get lined up like this so I can run them through my sewing machine, and of course, like I did with the wrist portion, I can carve down the edge allowance once it gets in. For a part like this, because it's got a really weird curve on it, I'm going to pin this portion down with my clips and then hand sew this entire part. You should always make sure that your stuff lines up perfectly based on how you've cut the fabric pieces on your pattern. See how that all lines up nicely? 
I did the exact same thing that I talked about earlier here with this marking. The outside of the black has seam allowance on it, but the inside of the maroon does not. As I pin these pieces, you can see that they line up absolutely perfectly and there's no scrunching in the fabric. Everything sits nice and flat the way it's supposed to and I don't have any like weird bubbles to attend with. Everything just sits really nice. And I started doing this about a year or so ago and it has made a heck of a difference ever since. Same with pinning the curves here on the chest that wrap around the torso. I also make sure that I pin down the spine portion with that big fluffy mane. And back to the sewing machine we go to sew any and all straight curves. Sewing, sewing, sewing. The never-ending process of sewing fursuits. Always make sure that the fur is inside your seams when you're sewing them. That's why you see me poking this one in here like this. Normally I would hand sew a portion like that, but because it was a long straight curve, I thought I could do it on my machine and it still turned out pretty good. It was just a little bit finicky to sew. Getting this tight round part here at the top proved to be extra difficult and I ended up having to reset my presser foot several times in order to get through that tiny little area. Now, this beautiful maroon color here was actually a local find. The issue with local find furs is that they are never quite the same as the ones you find online. Because of that, if you say make a partial with one of these and then you run out, you won't be able to get an exact matching color to do the rest of a bodysuit. So always buy more than you think you need when it comes to local find furs. Now I'm going to be installing the zipper. This process is exactly the same if you're doing a fursuit that has fur on the belly, but because this one had felt, which I'll explain a little bit later, I'm simply placing the zipper on the back side of the fabric upside down. So the part that's gonna be showing, that will be on our human belly, I guess that's the best way to say it. The way that I learned how to do this was from matrices, I believe is how you pronounce that. I think I've pronounced it wrong in the past. Simply take the zipper foot, and line it up along the edge here, sewing very close to the edge. Go all the way down the zipper, 
and make sure that you lock the thread at the top and bottom before swapping the zipper foot over to the other side and repeating. You should notice that this keeps everything nice and clean and in order, and it makes sure that that zipper stays directly in the center. This is also why I keep this panel separate from the rest of the body until it's fully sewn, because trying to run that huge piece through my machine is absolutely a hassle. Once it's been fully sewn, just cut a line along the center to free the zip, and then you can finally begin pinning it to the rest of the body. Now, when it came to pinning down these little portions on the leg, I wanted to make sure that I hand sewed them for accuracy. And looking at my pattern pieces, I thought I had them lined up properly. And on this particular kneecap here, I did. You can see that that center line where the little triangle is lines up with the center line here on the foot. That one was correct. The problem was I kind of forgot about that when it came to the other leg and well, I had to completely pop all the stitches off and re-sew it, which was, ugh, it was a hassle, but you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes, I guess. Mistake made, lesson learned. With that all done, I can move on to actually sewing the sides of the body. Now, I personally prefer to hand sew pieces like this, mostly just because I, I find that it's more accurate, especially with how tiny and thin these markings are. The thinner the marking, the more I don't trust the sewing machine to do an accurate job without distorting it. I kind of learned this the hard way when I did Winza 1.0 and her poor little stripes were just non-existent. Like, it was so sad that all that time and effort I put into them and you couldn't even see the beautiful teal on her stripes, but... You know, lesson learned, I guess. When in doubt, hand sew. Now here at the shoulders, it's actually kind of interesting because when these two halves come together here to be able to be fully sewn up, it was like lining up a puzzle. Those stripes made it perfectly accurate to ensure that everything lined up where it needed to line up. And because of the marking on the shoulder blade, I knew that everything was going to be lined up properly and that I wouldn't have to like pop my stitches and redo anything. So just lining up each one of these pieces and working my way all the way down the arm was super simple. I've had some characters that have crazy markings on their arms that are asymmetrical or wrap around in a weird way, and it was just oh, stressful to try and figure out. <laughs> but thankfully I did figure it out here, and you can see as I'm tucking in all these pieces, the shoulder lines up, and that armpit sits nice and cleanly. I love it when stuff works out properly. I'm almost suspicious when a marking lines up too good. Like, I don't run into any problems with the pattern. There's nothing that's, like, too long or too short. I don't have to trim excess. I <laughs> I think it's just because I'm getting better with my accuracy. But I always just feel suspicious. Just something sus going on. That's, that's all I can say when it comes to patterns lining up perfectly on the first try. <laughs> One little thing I do want to mention here on the armpit is that I'm actually triple threading 
So I have three tails on my thread rather than two, and I'm packing my stitches more tightly together for strength. I'm also only ever using upholstery thread when I hand sew a place like this. Because this is a high stress area, and I know it's going to be subject to a lot of movement, armpits and crotch seams are one of the spots that always pop seams first because of how actively they get moved around. So reinforce the stitching on those areas whenever you possibly can, and it will prolong the life of your suit. Because the rest of the arm is a nice long straight curve, I can actually run that through my sewing machine, and I don't have to hand sew that entire portion, which is fabulous because hand sewing sucks and takes forever. I did hand sew the stripes themselves just in case because I didn't quite think the machine was gonna, you know, be accurate enough. But since I machine sewed the actual underarm to make it more comfortable and lay flat, I went ahead and trimmed down the edges. Here is the splayed out bodysuit with almost all the pieces together. You can see that funky right knee where I screwed up and had to go back and change that later on. So, you know, make sure your patterns line up properly and don't be a dingus like me. Right here as I'm pinning it, I kind of noticed that, hmm, something's a little off. So I tried to adjust that leg panel and I did trim off a little bit of extra seam allowance that I didn't quite need, figuring, you know, that'll fix the problem. I'm sure that's what it was. It wasn't. It was the kneecap, because I'm a dingus, and I didn't line it up properly. Thankfully, it wasn't too difficult of a fix, because I did hand sew this portion, so I was able to fix it very quickly, but it just hammers home the point of always make sure that you're going through and you're double checking your patterns before you're pinning things and sewing them on. Because going back and fixing them is just such a waste of time. It's irritating, but it is what it is. <laughs> I always love when fursuits get to this stage as well, where you start pinning together the two halves because it just lines everything up and it really starts to actually look like a bodysuit. And you can see the character really starting to appear in this whole thing. And that's just so darn cool. <laughs> I went down and trimmed all the excess, and after everything was sewn together, you can see what the bodysuit looks like. It's really cool to see it just kind of laying there and understanding that you built that. You put that together. But then the fun part comes, and we get to turn it inside out and get ready to finish it. Before I do that though, this portion right here is going to be where I attach the wings. I haven't sewn this portion because I want it to be able to spread open. The problem is, over time, these areas tend to stretch and warp. How I've learned to combat this is to take a piece of hard felt with a small slit cut in the center, and I'm actually going to be applying hot glue along the top portion and sticking it down directly onto the bodysuit. You wanna try avoiding hot glue as much as possible on fursuits, because it really isn't a great material to use on a bodysuit, especially if you want it to be machine washable. It's just a pain to work with, and cleaning it up if you screw up is awful. I've had some suits come into my possession that were just choppy hot glue messes, and I pretty much had to make a brand new bodysuit because there was just no saving it. The hot glue was so thick and built up that I could not even remove it with Goo Gone. It was just too thick. Carefully lay the pieces of felt down, and wait till they fully dry. Repeat this with the rest of it once it has fully set, and just continue all the way down the line. The main reason why I choose to use hot glue on this part specifically is because when the hot glue dries, it will form a protective barrier and will sort of saturate into the backing of the fabric, thus bonding it and strengthening it. This will prevent it from warping, and it doesn't show any stitches through the backside, so it makes the hole much more seamless when you actually insert the wings through it. Once everything has been sewn together, you can begin turning the bodysuit inside out. Unzip the whole centerpiece, and then begin by just sticking your arms in there and pulling everything through.
At this point, you can take a look at it and see if there's any problematic areas that you need to fix. I did a test fit and I learned that those legs were definitely screwed up, so I had to go back and fix them. Once they were adjusted, I moved on to doing the zipper installations. Unfortunately, my camera got a little bit rebellious here and kept falling off the tripod, so you may notice that the footage slowly starts to slide downward. Yeah, that was the camera just losing it and falling off the tripod. I'll plan to do a video that explains this far more in depth, but doing these zip on feet was something that I picked up from watching Spirit Panda, and it has been such a staple ever since. Like, the ability to get that full look when it comes to a bodysuit without having to deal with attached feet, which are absolutely a pain to wash. I learned that the hard way. Simply line up the zipper the same way you would on a bodysuit if you've already sewn together too many pieces of it. Because it's a separating zipper, you just wanna make sure that there is a tiny bit of overlap with the fur. Do you see how there's a, like, I wanna say a 1 8 inch of an edge? That is exactly what you're gonna go for. Pin this area underneath the machine and using the zipper foot, slowly but surely work your way around the edge, keeping as close to the actual zipper teeth as possible. I've had people before ask me what kind of zippers I use, and I prefer the Coates and Clark brand. Once all that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and do the bias tape around the neck. Now, learning how to use bias tape was difficult to say the least. Uh, I think I initially saw how to do it by watching Mugiwara Cosplay do it on, I think their Wicker Beast paws was the one that it just clicked and I was like, oh, that's how you're supposed to use this stuff. I'll probably do a tutorial for it sometime in the near future that makes it a little bit more clear to understand because it does take a little bit of getting used to, but the whole purpose of adding the bias to the neckline is that it prevents the bodysuit from warping and stretching around the neck. I experienced this problem with Winza 1.0 and it was depressing when her whole bodysuit got saggy and all stretched out underneath the neck. But it's one of those things that you learn and you adapt your products for the future. And I also get to install my fantastic little tags. I'm so happy that I'm in a stage in my life where I have actual branding that I can put into my bodysuits like this. And I definitely have to give a shout out to customwovenlabels.com because they're who I purchased these from. And they are absolutely amazing. The whole commission process with getting those tags made was perfect. Once you've sewn the rest of the bias tape along the neck, you actually fold it over itself and pin it back down. This is the part that makes it a little bit tricky because you want to get a nice fold on it like that so it sits really cleanly and then sew right along the edge. I usually flip the bodysuit for this process because it's just easier to watch what I'm doing and making sure that everything's lining up. Sew all along these parts and make sure that you're very careful when going over heavy seams because sometimes your sewing machine can get caught on them. Go all the way down the chain And once it's all sewn together, you can take a look at that beautiful finished bias. I lost a bit of footage here, but this was the first time I'd ever made plating like this. So these particular plates that I have are made of a fabric stabilizer that's roughly one fourth of an inch thick. And then I covered it in minky and made little pockets. Each one of the pockets were then hand sewn together. The whole reason that I've done these plates like this is because I wanted a really cool three-dimensional effect from them instead of just making them out of fur and carving them. When you have a lot of similar colors on a bodysuit, you can break up things in the design and make it really stand out by using different textures and materials. That's exactly what I did here. But because it was the first time I'd ever did it, I didn't record the whole process. So hopefully sometime in the future, I'll get another commission that has plating like this and I'll be able to show you how I did it. Once everything is all pinned down, I'm gonna come in with my upholstery needle and I'm ladder stitching the entire side. Now, one thing I wanna mention regarding the ladder stitching here is I'm keeping it as close as possible to the edges because I don't want my stitching to show through the edge. 
I just want it to look like this is one and the same parts and that there is no sewing. I want these plates to look like they're part of the suit. And every single time I come to one of these corners, I tie a knot for stability before moving on to the next plate. You'll also notice that I have the bodysuit on the duct tape dummy because I want to make sure that these plates don't get distorted on the fabric pattern. And this was the best way to go about it. It's another one of those things where having a duct tape dummy for your client is vital when doing any kind of full suit. I've seen people that can do it without, but it's few and far between. <laughs> I repeated that process down the rest of the entire body, and once everything was all lined up, I then went to the other side, and rather than sewing it down, because I want that zipper to be accessible, I had to think of something else to be able to make this part look flush and seamless. Ultimately, my fix for this was to use heavy-duty Velcro, which I first put the sticky side down, cut on top a new piece, and then once these pieces were perfectly measured and cut, I went ahead and applied a little bit of hot glue to the top of each one before taking the plating and folding it down, waiting till it dried fully. I wanted to add a little bit of hot glue to these pieces, and in a little bit you'll see that I'm going to whip stitch all the way around them anyway. The main reason why I chose to do this is because I knew that these areas were going to be under a lot of stress, and I didn't trust the sewing by itself to make sure that everything stayed perfectly safe and that it didn't fall apart. Once I separated the two, I could come in and whip stitch all the way around that Velcro. That's why I only applied hot glue directly to the center so that the sewing needle didn't get caught in any hot glue as I tried to adjust it. There's lots of little details and things that artists will struggle with trying to overcome problems that nobody else has overcome before, and this was definitely one. I didn't want there to be a big zipper breaking up all these beautiful armor plates, and I wanted it to still be a front zip suit, because getting into back zipper suits is an absolute pain in the butt, and I just... I wanted it to be easier for my client to be able to use this fursuit. I repeat my stitching along each one of those Velcro pieces, however, I also wanted to stabilize these heavy-duty pieces on the bottom. I know that the adhesive that they have is really strong and should hold on by itself, but as an extra level of security and to give it a more pretty finished edge, I am hot gluing down tiny little strips of felt and waiting till it fully dries before turning the curves and lining them up with the rest of the piece. This also helped to hide the seam edges a little bit later on, so it was a win-win. Again, I really don't recommend using hot glue on a bodysuit any more than absolutely necessary. Just tiny little details and things like this that aid in the construction of the process, but don't entirely rely on hot glue, especially when it comes to your seams. Please don't hot glue your fur seams. It's gonna fall apart so fast. I repeated that process with every other plate until eventually I'm left with this. It looks absolutely phenomenal from the front. You can barely see the side that allows you to open it, but opening it is easy. All you have to do is just grab a hold of one of the plates and pull that sucker open. It's got good enough grip that it shouldn't pop open by itself, and it kind of resulted in this little hidden pocket. So the wearer will be able to actually keep their car keys or their phone or their room key when they're at conventions. Everything stays nice and tucked away. On the home stretch here, there's one more detail that I need to go through and do, which is where I take my shaver and I clean up any of the edges that are a little bit too scruffy. Because this character is a dragon, I didn't really want a big fluffy furry dragon aesthetic on him. I wanted him to look smooth and sleek and scaly. So in order to achieve that, I wanted to shave down this fur as short as I could possibly get it without it looking a little bit funky and wrinkly. You can see what a big difference this makes, especially in the crispiness of the markings. I've always preferred shorter furred bodysuits for several reasons. One, the markings are so much cleaner and crisper and just, oh my gosh, they make my brain so happy to see all that sewing shining through like that. It just looks awesome. But the other reason why I prefer short bodysuits is the maintenance. 
It is so much easier to clean and maintain a short furred bodysuit rather than a long furred one. I've seen long fur suits that they'll spend 20-30 minutes brushing and cleaning them and then immediately after it's all brushed and cleaned they put it on and it looks scruffy again. Like they didn't even wear it and it already looked scruffy. With short bodysuits, you really don't notice that as much and it just looks so much more clean. And I just, oh, there's something about it I love. You can see every little silhouette and shape and it just, it looks phenomenal. Once everything is all finished, you can put on that bodysuit and give it a test run. Here I'm showing how easy it is to get in and out of that zipper in the center, allowing you to get into this suit far easier than a back zip. It zips up super simply, and then lining up the Velcro is really easy. You just line up the edge, pull it tight, and make sure that it snaps shut. Fold the little top piece down, and then smooth out the minky to hide the seam. With the bodysuit all attached now, you can move around and see how it moves. Is there anything about it that you want to change or maybe update? This character has a little bit more of a flatter booty, but considering that it's more of a male designated dragon, I figured that the flat butt would be a little bit better because I don't know too many males that have super bodacious butts. So a little bit of a flat booty is fine here. <laughs> I can stretch around, I can move, I can run, I can jump, I can squat, any kind of movement and this bodysuit still stays exactly where it's supposed to. There's no weird wrinkling or bunching and it came out absolutely fantastic. I was super excited to finish the rest of this bodysuit. Yay, we did it. And after all that, you should have a fully completed bodysuit. If you found this tutorial useful or helpful or just entertaining in any way, be sure to leave a like because it lets me know that you enjoyed it and found it useful. And if you'd like to vote on the next topic for tutorials that we're going to do, go and head over to the community tab on my YouTube page and check it out. There'll often be polls that will allow you as the viewer to vote on what you'd like to see next. I believe the next one that we're going to work on is probably going to be the Super Motion Tail tutorial because there has been a lot of demand for that one. Beyond that, there may be little shorts here and there, but we'll see how things go. And if you did follow this tutorial and want to share your work with me, I would absolutely love to see it. Feel free to shoot me an email at artbynefertiti at gmail.com and make sure that you include those little periods in between each word. They are important. And now, of course, coming to the end of the video, we're going to go ahead and thank all of my wonderful, amazing patrons. Patreon is a tool that allows artists like me to be able to keep creating more free content for people like you. Head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash Nefertiti and take a look at some of my tiers. There's all kinds of fun stuff on there, such as all these wonderful little supporters that I have here. Every little bit makes a difference and I appreciate each and every one of you and I really hope that I can live up to your expectations and produce the kind of content that you enjoy. I also have to thank my wonderful silver patrons here who've been supporting me fantastically for quite a while now, and welcome my new silver patrons. You guys seriously mean the world to me, and it is awesome to know that I have supporters that keep funding my work and wanting to see more like this. Like, I didn't think I'd ever get to a point in my life where I'd be able to do stuff like this and have a Patreon, and it's just really cool that people like you are there to support me when I'm just starting out. Makes me excited to see where I'll be in 10, 15 years, you know? <laughs> And of course, I always have to thank my wonderful gold patron, Sea Noodles. Sea Noodles, you are just such a bundle of joy, and I love you so much for your little messages and your cute little things that you send me. Like, they honestly can lift up my day in a heartbeat. And not to mention that you're an incredibly talented artist as well. Like, look at that mural! Oh my gosh! That's amazing that you painted that! Like. Oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> I wish I had the ability to do stuff like that on my walls. Oh, it's gorgeous and such a perfect Pokemon too. I absolutely love it. Thank you for your support and just thank you for being you because you are absolutely amazing. And of course, I also have to thank my fantastic, amazing, stupendous, and wonderful Platinum patrons. The fact that I have Platinum patrons is just mind-boggling to me and I can't thank all of you enough. 
Of course, small red fox, you've been around since the beginning and being one of my best friends, like it's so cool to be able to talk with you on a personal level and hear about your life and what you've been up to and just seeing all your suit shenanigans. Like you never fail to make me smile and I can't thank you enough for that. And supporting me on top of this, commissioning me like, ah, what did I do to deserve it? You're too wonderful. <laughs> I can't wait till I get to see you again. Oh, I miss conventions so much. I would also like to thank my other platinum patron, Cyril the Floof. You're very new and you popped up from nowhere. So I would definitely like to get to know you better so that I can be able to send you your own personal little fantastic message at the end of the video. So feel free to message me on Patreon or Twitter or the whatevers, you know, we'll talk, we'll chat. It'll be great. It'll be fantastic. And another new patron for my platinum tier who just spawned out of nowhere. Uh, I guess I'll call you Carbon for now because I'm not sure what you want me to call you, but um, feel free to message me and say hello. I'd love to be able to get to know you more personally and just get to be friends. It's always cool when I can connect to my patrons, especially patrons that are going so above and beyond to support me. So please let me know I can reach out to you because I would super duper love to. Or if you don't want to talk to me, that's okay too because I don't want to pester you. So... Thank you for your support, all of you. If you would like to join these wonderful, amazing people, please go check out my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Nefertiti. You can also find it linked down in the description. There's all kinds of tiers there for everybody. And you also get access to all of my free bases that I give out. They are all available in the PSD files for bronze patrons and up. I know I haven't posted a new one in quite a while, but I promise I'll get back on those and I'll start releasing them again every single Friday. But enough of my rambling and self-advertising. If you'd like to support me, go check out Patreon. If not, you can always keep watching my YouTube videos because I'm going to keep on posting them no matter what. TikTok may have taken me down, but you know what? It gives YouTube a chance to blossom, so we're going to take that chance and roll with it. Thank you all so very much for watching. And hopefully sometime in the near future, I'll be able to make a video regarding the padding itself on this because that is going to be a very long video. And... I don't want you to have to suffer through two and a half hours of making the padding and the body and the stuff and sewing. It's a lot of stuff to do, but we'll get to it together. I promise. Well, as always, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and a fantastic life. If you're looking for a more adult and ranting side of myself, you can look forward to my podcast that's coming up soon. More information coming soon. Titty Talks.